the odds that uh, Mike Tyson will bite another ear off this next time. Oh, yes! This is exactly oh. what I want to fucking talk about. Hold on a minute. Yes! <laughs> you think he'll make it into another edible? Of oh. course. Oh, yes. Oh. Imagine little little Jake Paul figurines. Oh, my God. He's going to have a right ear, left ear. Oh, my God. Stop. Rico! Podcast. Bring a friend! <laughs> What a way to start the episode. Just, just, hey, Danny, we need something funny right off the bat. What, did, what is the wildest thing you can say? Well, you know, Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. I'm just wondering which gummy would be stronger, the Holyfield ear? Ooh, <laughs> that's a good Definitely the Holyfield ear. Here's How the much? Thing. Hold Let's on. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. If you we'll make up. a strength, right, you need the Holyfield ear to knock you out. Because Holyfield was a world champion, and you need the baby weed to be the Jake Paul weed. The baby weed, like what do you mean, baby <laughs> weed? Like, hold on, here, no, I'm like pulling the Delta out. Nine, like Delta Nine. You know what I'm saying? Just Delta Eight, yeah, Delta, Delta Nine. Nine. It's like the Delta Nine. It's like the Delta Nine. It's just, it just kind of takes you to the edge, but it doesn't really put you down into the abyss. Kind of like going darkness. to the strip clubs, then, huh? Oh man, I don't know. I haven't gone to a strip club in years, so I wouldn't know. I haven't gone to a strip club in forever. Know. What was the last time y'all went forever. to a strip club? Ever. Probably like six, seven years ago. It sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a while, dude. Here, here it is. Mike Tyson gummies. Uh ba, 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 CBD infused. Uh, ba. <laughs> he he sells about forty thousand units uh a week. That's fucking wild. That's wild. I can't see the bag of how strong are they. No, no. You know you can share on StreamYard, right? Like you can share screen. Well, screen. yeah, but I didn't find what I was looking yeah, for, so I didn't want to. I didn't so want to like unnecessarily share. At like, least it's at least strong enough to make you feel dizzy. It's strong enough. Anyway. <laughs> Have hey, you seen the you commercial think? for those though? Have you seen the commercial no, for those edibles? No, no. We can't. We if this Hold is on. going on YouTube, we can't play that. No, we can't play. Hold that. on. Ah, oh, fuck yeah, we can't. We can't. Okay. Yeah, YouTube's yeah. been iffy. It's basically him walking up to the the guy who bit his ear. God damn it! I'm having a brain fart. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I've seen it where he goes. I'm he's sorry. Like, ah, he's like a thigh, and it's like what it's holy. No. So so me and my dad were having this conversation the other day because you know we got you know I got the new stepson here living with us and stuff, and um, mm -hmm. we were having this conversation and the kid was like, "Yo, Jake Paul, he's the greatest boxer of all time." Like believe in the hype, right? And then me and my dad goes. Do you not know how scary Mike Tyson used to be like in his 20s? <laughs> like how scary he is? Like I think about this and I'm like, yo, this kid Jake Paul, talented, bro. I'm not going to take it away from him. The kid is talented, but the dude just started boxing. Like he started boxing like five years ago. He's, well, you know how it is. He's at best a purple belt in jujitsu, right? Like he's at best a purple belt in boxing. I don't know if he grapples. Does he grapple? He, no, he's is a, there he's videos? A he's a state champ know. wrestler. But I'm talking about. I'm talking about. He won. Like, well, still, well, never mind. He's a state champion. Yeah. He, he, here's what I'm saying, right? Like, if boxing was jujitsu, like in ranking systems, right? Like, he's at best a purple belt, right? Like, he's um, at best a purple belt, right? Like, he's had some fights. He has some experience. He's knocked out some guys, but he's like, well, he, he's, he's not. Um, he's not a world beater. He's not a world beater, right? Like, friggin' Tyson Fury's brother, friggin' whatever his name is, friggin' put a beating on him, like if it was nothing. He was like, hey, dude, I'm a black belt. Uh, put a beating on you real quick, and that's exactly what happened. And homeboy just is really good at marketing. He's like, he's like Nicky Rod, you know. Yeah, Nicky, he, he knows <laughs> how to market. He knows you, how to market. When you see him, he knows in how to a market, picture like, next to Tyson, and you're yeah. like, Tyson yeah. definitely looks. I think good. I think that's Tyson, one of the reasons he's suing everybody. Like that's one of the reasons he's like suing a ton of people. Have you have you heard about this? I was just having this pussy. conversation with Tyler. He's a pussy. He's a pussy. No, I think. Well, here's the thing. You you can say that. But at the end of the day, when people su start suing people for shit is because they're trying to protect something wholeheartedly. And that's what I think, because like his his character in, in wrestling is like based upon prime. You like, talk about Logan Paul. No, Logan Paul and Jake Paul are two different people. The Paul brothers. OK, yeah. Well, the Paul brothers. Yeah. So the Paul you, brothers. Well, so you know, you, you know, G you know, Jake so keeping Paul that in mind, mind, do you think Diddy's going to start suing a lot of people? Do you think what? You think Diddy's going to start suing no, a lot of people? I think it, I suing think people? Be, no, no, 
No, no. I think he has something to hide. No, we, no, we, we talked about this. Did you? What's your thoughts? What's your thoughts? What's your thoughts? I want to hear this. He's he's gonna be like Roman Polanski. He's just gonna live outside of the country most of the year, come back for like an award ceremony, and then leave before the cops get them to him every time. He's gonna be the new Rome. He's gonna be the black Roman Polanski. Do you know who Roman Polanski is? No. Hey. Explain who Roman Polanski is, please, Eric. <laughs> Danny's like, I don't have he's the a, I don't have the energy. <laughs> no, he's an actor and he got in in the, He's not an actor, trouble. he's a director who Oh Roman, the director. I'm sorry. My my, my bad. He's my a bad. director uh, who raped director. a little girl. Who raped the little yeah. girl. Oh Jesus Christ. And got away allegedly. with allegedly. And allegedly uh, raped the little allegedly. girl. And then as yeah, soon allegedly. as they were about to catch him, he fled to France. And he lives in France. Oh, a French yeah. court clears director Polanski of the faming a British actor who accused yeah, him of rape. Confused oh, you. he was cleared. He was cleared <laughs> of this. Well, in Paris. In, in, Paris, in Paris. A French court cleared him of it. Yeah, well, the, but he's we living all, outside we all of know the, the... We all know the French like weird shit. Okay? The fr- okay. <laughs> Jesus it's like it's, it's it's like this. It's like it's like I don't take the French seriously, and I also definitely don't take the Canadian seriously. Like, fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think, well, at least the Canadian. I, I know, think just I at think least the Canadians don't eat snails. That's all. Oh, Jesus Christ! I don't think he'll come back because Fifty Cent has been trolling the shit out of him, like the ever living shit. Like Fifty Cent Damn. bought like the not bought he he, he trademarked or something. Dude, for for the audio, for the apology audio, he put like a, a trademark on it saying that he owns that audio, the the apology video. So I oh. bet you he's cooking something. Yeah, Fifty Cent. I don't know if you follow Fifty Cent's Instagram, bro. It's it's, it's like the the level of pettiness, the level fantastic. of pettiness. It's, and he's still in great like shape, there. and he's in great shape at fifty. Phenomenal. Oh yeah. Shape. No, yeah. no, no. So here's the thing: the Diddy thing goes a really deep, though, right? Because um, there's this music producer that used to work with Diddy that's connected to Drake. That's part of this whole beef with Kendrick and Lamar and mm-hmm. all this crap. Like basically this, this guy, and I forget his name. We talked about him on my podcast. It's like, he was the guy funding all the Diddy parties. He was oh, the selfless, guy. selfless plug in for the podcast. I don't care. It's fine. Jose knows mm-hmm. what we're doing here. It's <laughs> fine. What's his name? Jose, What's his name? Jose, 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 my brother. Anyway, my brother, you know, we talked about this. It was like this guy was just, you know, he's like deep, like deep. He's like, he's like the, the Jelaine Maxwell of hip hop, right? Like he's like the guy that Jesus. brought all the girls. He's the guy that brought all the girls and all the weird, all the weird uh, stuff, all the meek bro. males just to the Diddy party. It was crazy. Like, like when you look into it, it's it's crazy what happened because it's like, and, and this is something I say on my podcast. It's like, yo, it's like hip hop is not biting off of white people, you know, scandals. Like they can't come up with their own unique scandals. So now they're just biting off of white people scandals. They're just like, hey, you know, it's not, you know, we can't. We we're not messy enough. We need to just copy how white people are messy now. So we're just gonna pretend to be, you know. <laughs> I, I think, that's one thing. That's one think, thing that kills me. I think you can be any color and be a pedophile. Yeah, no, well, for sure. The one, thing, the one thing that kills me about like hip hop and rap and all that shit is like it used to have like they used to rap about shit that they did. Now it's like you have rappers or hip hop artists like saying that they do drugs, but they've never touched it, mm-hmm. and it's like really eerie to me that that's the thing. That's that's always been a conspiracy that like cracks me. Well, up it used to that. be the gangster rap, and they were actually gangsters. Yeah, they used to be. Yeah, like like the it, yeah yeah. That's the thing. It's like yeah. it's like. I don't and know. now it's like it's like yeah. Fake. I seen it. I I seen yeah, it's too much fake shit. I seen Free Jack City. So <laughs> what? Free and I'm. I'm I love you, Eric. I know that you're taking all the Viagra and all the testosterone oh in the world, god. but don't oh don't culture vulture, bro. Don't culture vulture. Oh my okay? god! It's don't a fucking it. movie. Do it. Fuck off. Do it. It's <laughs> New Jack City, bro. It's what? Never. It's a fucking movie. <laughs> I'm not poaching anything. <laughs> I don't tell you. Don't, don't say yabba dabba do. That's my word. Do it. <laughs> That's how Eric thinks every Hispanic person sounds. <laughs> No, I. You know what? I imagine Eric thinks every Hispanic person sounds like a Brazilian fresh out of Brazil. Oh, I've actually, I've actually had conversation where Eric's like, I really didn't understand Puerto Rican Spanish. I brought a dictionary, and then they were like, "Throw that away. That's not yeah. gonna work here." 
<laughs> Seriously, I did. I was like, I'm in, I'm in Puerto Rico. I'm going to learn Spanish. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. <laughs> Bro, other people that speak Spanish have a hard time understanding this. It's like, mira, 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 I'm Puerto Rican. Old women like have a hard time understanding this. It's like, yeah, it's I like, get yelled wow. at. It's like, that's a lamp. And they're like, like hold on, go ahead, Danny. <laughs> it's like this, man. I'm Puerto Rican as fuck. Okay. And like, I remember when the word like cru came out for the first time. And I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> Eso está bien, right, cru. And you're like, what? I don't know. <laughs> I remember when gasolina was like a hit in Puerto Rico. Oh, yeah. And then I left Puerto Rico and gasolina. then in America it was a hit. And I'm like, why? Why do you people like this? Like, I've been listening to the song for four years. Everywhere. Fucking everywhere. Everywhere. Like, wasn't gasolina allegedly about like chicks who like cum shots or something like that? It, it was something about that, right? Yeah, that was like the I think, gasoline. I think so, yeah. yeah, I think it's so. It's put gasoline or put gas. Um, like, yeah, uh, well, it's about making a dude come basically, right? So it's not just come, I guess. But, so it's like, damn my gasolina, and then like the dance to it. If you like, look it up, look up gasolina dance, like it's literally girl, like, 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 like twerking, like what twerking was before twerking was, right? Like it's funny and it's hilarious. Let me, I'm not, I'm not pulling it up because it's fucking, yeah, YouTube's been iffy. So you see right here. This is how the dance was. Hold on. Yeah, that right there. And then come shot, come shot, come shot. <laughs> yeah, just shake their ass like that. Oh, okay. that was that was yeah. yeah, that was like the thing. I'm that was like flash, I'm thing. having flashbacks to 2004. 2004. <laughs> It's like it's like it's like it's like PTSD, bro. It's like you have just oh, booty flashbacks. Yeah. Like, like, oh my god! Oh god! That's yeah, good. that must be weird. Be like 2004. That was a good year. That was a good, <laughs> was a good year. That was a good year. Listen, it was the height. Of, it was the height of the Bush administration. It was a great oh year. <laughs> Listen, bro. He does have a point. <laughs> Height of the Bush administration, him declaring that we won the Afghani and Iraqi war like three weeks after we invaded. Oh my God, yep. it was phenomenal, bro. Flying Why in, it was 20? weird. He went, bro, he, uh, bro, he actually flew, it. He actually flew, flew landed on a carrier, up. and they had mission K police or mission please complete. Pull that up on there. It has to be. It's like and he's from it? Texas. Hold on, what is it? And he's from Texas, so he thought it was like Waco. It was like we'll get done in this a couple weeks. Oh me. Bro, like pull it up, put like Bush landing on aircraft carrier. Yeah, he flew bro. the plane. Talk about the most cowboy shit of all time, bro. This dude was so Texas. He was like, Yo, I think it'll be a good idea to Mission land on an aircraft carrier. Okay, so bro. here we go on wiki. Mission accomplished. Bro, please. Uh, on May 1st of 2013. Share this. This is this is news. This dude, they can't copyright this shit. Uh, it's it's not it's official, Bush. So, okay. They can't keep Bush down. They can't keep Bush Bruh, down. No, I'm finding it. I'm Bush's assertion that the sign itself became controversial as the Iraqi insurgency gained pace and developed into a full-on secretarian war. The vast yeah. secretariat. I love how we get to shut the fuck up. I the vast enough, majority after, of casualties after, US I'm, and Iraqi yeah. da, 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 Terps fought for eight oh, more enough. years. Yep. Oddly yeah, enough, we were there for another two I'm, I'm, I'm going to share. I'm going to share. Hold on. I'm going to share this. Hold on. Let me see. Hold on. I got you. Wait. I got it. Hold on a second. I yeah, got to wait. Can... Yeah, wait. Oh, he can share. Yeah. I don't care. Can Hold on. Bro, check this out. This is like the best thing I've ever seen in my life. What's up? So this day is like the best thing. Check this out. Homie is flying in. Oh, yeah. Him flying in. Bro, check it out. <laughs> and the world had not seen before from distant bases or ships at sea oh god sent planes and missiles that could destroy an enemy division or strike a single right, fast forward that shit casualties i'm telling you dog like that was the height of the early 2000s was bush doing cowboy shit because he, he got out of his flight suit, got out of his flight suit 
His suit was already on underneath it and just walks up to the podium. Bro, that's pretty gangster. That's right. I've right. seen pictures of him like taking beer shots while Secret Service is near him at like uh, OCS places. Like, uh, what the fuck is called? The uh, Naval Academy and shit. Like, I've seen people with pictures of that. Bro. Like, they and they, yeah. and when they, you know, he when they show got- it, the command will be like, hey, you need to take that off your office. He's like, it's the fucking ex commander in chief. Like, and he's just fucking chugging a beer. And you yeah. see the other officer, like, yeah, like bro. fucking Stay wild, bro. You, yeah, you actually you got, want- got pulled over for DUI. Bush did. What, oh, shit. Where, wherever, you wherever know what they told him? You go straight home. <laughs> he, was, he was the last real man to be in the presidency office. Okay. He was the last real man. Okay. Oh, God. He a, he's a cowboy frat boy from Texas. I didn't give a flying fuck. Okay? Yeah. He, I, hey, I, I think you're think I think you're forgetting that Michelle was in the White House as well. Yeah. Well, you know, um, I am not about to get canceled for that. I'm still trying to build a YouTube channel. So. <laughs> And he's like, I'll go on Richard shit. I'll go on Richard shit. And destroy his crap. Richard shit. <laughs> we'll burn your shit down. Yeah. I'm, I'm still trying to build a YouTube channel. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm not even talking politics. I'm talking about you know how crazy this guy was. I mean, you're over here bringing up you know transgendered women. What's wrong with you? I did never said that. I know you didn't said that. that. I did not say that. <laughs> oh God! So I gotta, sir, I gotta are show you, are this. You, are you insinuating, sir? Juneteenth is coming up. You cannot talk about the former first lady that way. For National Cosplay Month. It is cosplay. Or am I confusing it, that? No, it is cosplay month. Isn't it? No, it's Juneteenth, bro. Juneteenth is on. It's around the corner. We just celebrated Memorial Day. Now we're gonna celebrate the, the Juneteenth. <laughs> Memorial Day. We Teenth, celebrated Teenth Memorial. Is, Teenth we, is not a. Day. That's a. That's a strong word. Hey, have you seen this? I was gonna. I was gonna send this to you. Fucking. <laughs> There's really no one asked oh, yeah. for this technology. I'm feeling depressed. There are many things you can try to deal with. <laughs> Question: One Reddit user suggests jumping off the Golden Gate Bridge. First of all, if you feel sad and you feel depressed, go get help. Like that's the first thing we're going to yeah, start out by saying. Because not everybody lives in California. Or, or you can just do what that post says. <sighs> oh, I'm not God. saying it's a good oh. idea. I do not oh, condone God. what. Oh my God! Either. But it's a it's an option. It's, it isn't a good one. Well, again, no, it's not a good option. And people are worried that AI is going to take over. No, well, if no, people no. start listening to the, what their advice, well, then I mean, that's not the only one they did. They said if you throw trash in the ocean, it actually helps the underwater sea life community or civilization down there. It's we throw the, guns it, in the ocean. I don't know if you I both know, know that. that. Yeah. Like, I know you know it, but we throw cut, you know what else we throw in the ocean? Dead bodies? Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff we throw in the ocean. I'm telling don't you, dude, when Atlantic don't comes out, don't ask what's in the Hudson. I mean, I'm just saying, don't ask what's in the Hudson. When Atlantic comes invade, bro, we're fucked. We're so fucked. Everybody thinks Aquaman's going to be like his in Justice League. That motherfucker's going to have guns after guns after guns, bro. Like, I'm telling you. <laughs> I know. We- what the fuck is that face for? We threw a lot of we threw a sauce. I was on the oh. ship. We threw a lot of stuff over there. They could actually make a plane underwater. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Underwater. Mm, okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. If Aquaman existed, be the pussiest man of all fucking time. Okay. How? Listen, How? Listen, the, the Marines exist. Okay. The Marines. The, the Marines you call the Marines pussies? No. 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 The Marines exist, and they're. You're trying to tell me that Aquaman would kill a Marine? Are you kidding? A Marine would cook Aquaman. Okay. Literally, they'll make sushi out of the guy. Okay. All right. All right. Listen, listen to me. If after Arrow, they pee on it. Mar- after they pee on it. <laughs> after they fucking put a after they lift their nut sacks and fucking, you know, oh do whatever God. they have to do. You know, like these guys, they they're insane, bro. Like literally, my my nephew, bro, my nephew, and my oldest nephew. He he just graduated from boot camp. And this kid has changed. Like I saw him, his eyes aren't the same. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm like, oh, like, like. Yeah. There's a reason. There's a reason we haven't been invaded in like a long ass time. Like, nah, dude. The the rules he, of engagement yeah, would be did, like did there would that, be no ROEs. You know, like I'm just saying. Once you out, once you're out of boot camp, you get that, you know, redneck look. Or what are you talking about? 
bro, this kid got out of my got out of, got out of boot camp. He did his graduation. He was like, he, I mean, he was polite. He wasn't mean, but like the look in his eyes changed. He was like, yo, I saw some shit. And I'm like, bro, you ain't even seen anything yet. And he was like, I lost friends in boot camp. And I'm like, bro. <laughs> <laughs> One of my buddies couldn't do 10 pull-ups. And I'm, and I'm over here. I'm over here. They kicked him out. They kicked him out. <laughs> we lost so many guys on the rock march, bro. You don't get it. And, and I'm I was there. there. I was there. That, like, dude that goes to Applebee's. He had to go back to New Jersey. Do you understand? Oh my god. And I'm yeah. like, and I'm like, oh, homie. You haven't oh, even deployed god. yet. And he's like, his his look changed. And I'm like, don't give him crayons. Ellie, like my sister, I'm like Ellie. Don't put the crayons. Oh, away. he was a marine. <laughs> he was. Yeah, a marine. he graduated boot camp. Yeah. Oh. He just graduated boot camp. Yeah. yeah. I'm like Ellie. Put your like hide all your crayons and your markers. Keep them away from him too. Okay? Wait, wait yeah. until he goes to uh his tan belt and shit like that. Wait until he does the Marine Corps martial arts shit. <laughs> oh, the blood <laughs> strike too. Yeah, like like all all that shit. I I laugh because it's like it's so watered down. Really? Like it's. Oh, water. It is. It is. I mean, it's effective for what it, it's meant to be, which is like you should learn how to fight with a vest, how to deal with knives and shit like that in some way, shape or form. Right. Because you have to do something. But like. Nah, homie. Like, <laughs> like I've heard of like, so many guys. I've heard of guys, like especially when I first started yeah. training, that were like, you know, they were young like me. They were. 18, 19 years old. They got their blue belt and jujitsu or whatever. Then they decided to enlist. Then I hear stories like, bro, like fucking Marine Corps or Army combatives. It's like, bro, it's trash. Literally, like, collar sleeve, freaking <laughs> spider sweep all day. <laughs> like, people don't respect. Yeah, most people. And the thing, what people don't understand is yeah. there's thousands of dudes in the Army that just train jujitsu on a regular basis. Like, I was one of those guys. We always had a guy that was at least a blue belt or a purple belt. Or, like, in Korea, you have John Franco's. But, dude, there's guys that all the time they're like, hey, I'm going to figure this out. And, like, they're like, okay, well, we're going to drill this because this is why. But, like, they, they don't really know how to teach. But the cool thing is you get the aggression out of you, number one. And, number two, <laughs> you start understanding. Like, some people will eventually develop, like, oh, I can't keep going here. I need to go here. But if you're a purple belt in jiu-jitsu and you train regularly and you've been training for a while and you grab someone from in combatives, they don't respect they don't respect a collar sleeve they don't respect like a baseball bat choke they don't respect spider guard they don't they don't they, they're just like ah whatever you you're trying to give me candy or it's like no like i'm about to slam you like it's oh, no, i've not, seen it I've seen not, it. not just slam you i'm about to choke you and you won't be yeah you're not gonna know what to do but no. there's some other guys, but then there's some other guys that they, they've trained their whole life and they're still, you know, they did 20 years and they're also black belts and shit mm -hmm. like that. Like there's those type of people too, you know, oh, yeah. but it's, mm -hmm. it's far, it's, it's far in between, bro. It's bro, far so, in between. Uh, you you want to hear something funny, right? So I put, I put the kid and um, my stepson in, in jujitsu and we started training together and, you know, I'm. I'm just getting back into it. You know, I got, I got my purple belt, you know, the only thing that the problem right now is just my gas, like my gas tank isn't there. So after class, he's like, he, he has his little stuff and he learned, you know, he learned how to hip and some shit. And I'm like, all right, let's roll. Right. And and I'm like, you know, I'm the size discrepancy, you know, I'm a big dude. So I just lay down and I'm like, come on, just do what you do. Like, just attack me. Like, I'll be fine. Whatever. So I give him my back and he's trying to choke me. And then I just get out of it. And the look and the fear of this child. Like, I felt so bad because I didn't even, like, come up on top. I just literally, like, regained butterfly guard and sat up. And he, goes, <laughs> and he just looked at me. Like, what am I supposed to do? And then it was like, and then I look at him and I think about all the other adults that gave me the same look. When I did this on a regular basis. And I'm like, oh, my God. It's like, like children there's a lot of false confidence like there's children. a shit ton of false confidence like and, it's that, like, and that i'm happens. not that good and i'm and i suck right like in like in, in the grand scheme of jujitsu is jujitsuing right like the, the jujitsu practitioners i suck but it's like compared to the guy who's walking off the street i'm like a master which is insane right like it's it's stupid i'm like okay so the only person that i should really be worried about coming off the street is a D1 wrestler. Maybe a they don't even get in fights. But they don't they don't even get into fights because they know like they get told in training like hey man like 
in a lawsuit, bro, you you're you're at a negative. Like if we're talking IBJJF, it's Gracie Baja against everybody else, and you're already at a fucking. They already have two two advantages that you can't see. You know what I'm saying? Like you better fucking like they know, well, dude. They know. Wrestlers other, know. Wrestlers know that they'll they'll get sued, bro. Plus, you there's double other, it someone. There's other people that they don't like. Mike Tyson, no man messes with him. Yeah, not yeah, because yeah. Uh, assuming it's just like you don't want to get hit by Mike yeah, Tyson. Yeah, man. But the thing is, is like you don't want to <laughs> get hit. But like the thing is, is like you also have to be careful, like as a practitioner, because like if you double, because you don't see Mike Tyson getting into fights. No, you know what I'm no. saying. No, back in the day, you did though. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> back in the day, he would be at the. Exactly. I, I, <laughs> he'd be like, "What you what you say about my daughter?" <laughs> what do you think about my daughter? Getting hit by Mike Tyson has to feel like getting hit by the Hulk. Like, have you ever read the comic books where like people there's a comic book where like they literally they have like Wolverine and Thor be like, What's it like to get hit by the Hulk? He goes, You get hit and you fly, and then the pain hits you. And I'm just like, <laughs> Dear God, could you imagine you're flying through the air and then the pain hits you? Fuck have you that. ever have you ever heard his Alexander the Great speech after the after his fight against like I think it was really yeah, 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 yeah. Have you heard yeah. have you heard that? Have you heard that, Eric? Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. his Alexander yeah, if that, if that doesn't make you shit yourself just a little bit, you're not human. <laughs> okay, when this man just goes, I didn't even train for this fight, but I am cut from a different cloth. I'm cut from the cloth, of Jack Dempsey. I'm cut from the cup of the. I am him. I am Alexander. I am the man. I am. The, was like, yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, yeah. You you have a screw loose. And there is nothing I can do to stop. It. It, it was well, weird. that was back in the day. It was like, back in it was the day. Like, definitely, there was like you know you can tell something was going on. But I think was, too when yeah, you surround, I didn't think your, it was weird because nobody tapped him on the show. I was like, hey, you won. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think. Yeah. I think the the. I think part of the issue with that is like he probably had a lot of people around him that were like scared to say something. That that should have probably said something. And again, oh, this yeah. is just me looking at it from the outside, right? Oh yeah, you know he like, had, you he, had people like that. You he know probably he had. had people that told him, and they probably like. Are you me. shitting me? What? No. Then there's another interview he did in the '90s in mm -hmm. a press conference where he looks at one of the freaking reporters and says, "I'll fuck you till you love me." I'll fuck you. <laughs> Hashtag no diddy. <laughs> Why do he say that? <laughs> Bro, he just got it. I think that was like right after he got out of jail. Like he did like a stint in jail for like. Oh for like, yeah, I remember that. Right, and then he was like, he was promoting a fight, and like, uh, uh, he's never liked reporters. By the way, Mike Tyson's never liked reporters. He's like, he thinks who the like, fuck does. Right, and then he goes, he goes, he goes. What do you say about me? I'm like, I'm like you'll understand. I just did real fucking time. I did real fucking time. And guess what? I'll fuck you till you love me. I'm like, oh. <laughs> that's terrifying. That is like, I don't give a fuck what you say. Like, that like, is like, terrifying. There's no, there's no jujitsu that'll stop that. I'm sorry, no, guys. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Mike Tyson, no. Mike Tyson, bro. No, no. You better have immaculate technique, and even then, I mean, you better John Wick. <laughs> 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 like, 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 uh, if a grown man literally has the balls to say, I'll fuck you till you love me, <laughs> I would run. Yeah, I would <laughs> run. I don't know if I'd pass out or run. Sleeping, I mean, sleeping, he's right in front of me. I'm and sleeping he says with that. a samurai sword and I'm sleeping <laughs> with a fucking shotgun. Like, and like body armor and you're, diapers. You're, you're sleeping with a gun like this. You're like, <laughs> probably a butt plug just to be safe. Like, <laughs> Bad. Electric one. He'll be, like, He'll be surprised <laughs> when he My gets it. <laughs> Mike <laughs> <Tyson. laughs> And here's the thing, right? Like, like this is the problem with Jake Paul. Like, Jake Paul doesn't respect the fact that Mike Tyson has worked on himself enough to be this calm. And I'm like, look, listen. Oh, yeah. Yes, he's fifty something years old, and you, the kid, has the age advantage. But I'm like, Mike Tyson's been boxing since he was like ten. He was it's a world champion, but he was nineteen. Yeah, dude fought the best of the best of his era. He only lost three fights on paper. Like homie, even at fifty something years old, you you've been boxing five years. Homeboy's been boxing his entire life. He he's not thinking. He's just going. He's reacting. You're yeah. still thinking. It's ultra instinct. Oh, well, it's go well, Google that, ultra instinct. Is well, that, and he was doing it in prison. Yeah. 
So <laughs> not just in prison when he was no no no. Here's the thing, Mike Tyson. No, he was, was in prison because he was working out and and uh, no 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 yeah he no, didn't no, have he, steroids but he was no, still no, working here's out. Thing, here's the thing. Talk about like Custy Amato was what he is probably the best boxing trainer of all time. Like he's trained Jack Dempsey, he trained uh, Floyd Patterson, he trained a bunch of guys that like back in the day were like the the man right. But, like, the way he trained Mike Tyson wasn't just to be a good boxer. It was to be this killer. He used brainwashing techniques. He literally had Mike Tyson watch fights, reels upon reels upon reels. And, like, it's crazy. Like, when you hear him talk about his life as a boxer, especially, like, young after he was he got taken out of foster care and moved up to the Catskills. He was like, I, I live life like a warrior. Like, all I did was eat, sleep, and fight every day. Like, every day from the time he was, like, 10 years old. Like, it's insane. Like, it, it's not oh, fair. Wow. It's not Man. fair. Like, like I, I mean this. Like, it's not even, it's not close. Like, at 50-something, there's a reason China hasn't invaded. It's because Mike Tyson is still alive. <laughs> <laughs> okay? <laughs> oh, my God. Do you think? Do you think that the Chinese army wants to even try uh, to get through LA? Just because Mike I can just see that. Oh, I I can just see that they'll show up and be like, "We have a Tyson," and they turn around and go back. Yeah, but here's the other thing: you got Mike Tyson, right? And then you have all these Medal of Honor recipients that are in their 30s and 40s that are like, "We're gonna go do what?" <laughs> Like, yeah, I'm definitely going to go. do. I get to do what? I'm sorry. Like, let's go. It it gets better. right? And then behind them, you have all the rednecks that live everywhere between (laughs) Texas to Alabama and Florida. And in the back, in the back, you got the Puerto Ricans cooking and throwing parties. That way, when everybody comes, there's a party, there's somebody to fuck, and you got good food, bro. And if all else fails, you got the Cubans living down in Miami that are escaping communism and refuse to have that shit happen here. (laughs) That's true. That's true. Oh God! Bro, and they know re- how to. No, they know how to use a knife too. <laughs> there's a reason that the Brazilians <laughs> wait. No, the Brazilians now, because all the all the Brazilian jujitsu people are moving up here. Lo, lo Venezolano, the guys are escaping freaking yeah. communism. Oh, Venezuela? Venezuela. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, bro, it's a scary thought. Like I'm like I think about it. It's like yo, we got Mike Tyson as the first line of defense. Then we got all the Medal of Honor recipients, all the former spec op guys, all those guys just sitting there behind Mike Tyson. Like yo, Mike Tyson got this. We're good, right? Hey, <laughs> we're gonna let him go, and he's gonna he's like Genghis Khan. Like he's, he's gonna rape and pillage and murder, <laughs> and then we're gonna be fine. Like, and then, and then we have on the right of me, sniper on the left of me. And we have Draco <laughs> Willing. Then we got you know Tim Kennedy and all those guys, you know, right behind them. Be like, yo, this is you know, this is how we protect this place. And then you got like to me, it's like if you get past the rednecks, you know, and in the middle of the country, you deserve to take this country. It's like, I'm here. Like, that's not gonna happen. Thank you. Like, oh, thank, God. You. thank you. Like, well, like, you know, they'll stop at Colorado because that's where the weed's at. Yeah, bro. They won't make it past Florida because we'll just give them enough food that they'll be like, you know. <laughs> Maybe America isn't so bad, and you know, be like, like we're gonna stay in Florida. I think that's the only, only place you can actually start a fire on the beach. I think they'll stay. <laughs> no, you can start a fire on the beach in Puerto Rico. Yeah, you can. I mean, if they make it to Puerto Rico, they'll probably like won't leave. Like, I mean, I'm just saying, if, if you make it to Puerto Rico, if you want to invade America after stopping in Puerto Rico, there's something wrong with you. Like, you have deeper problems that I can't. If you stop in Puerto Rico and you get to Puerto Rico and you start eating food. And you start going to the nightclubs and you start drinking until three in the morning and then starting again at eight and you still want to invade the country. I, I think we should we should pursue explain, other options. Okay, okay, then explain why all these people want to get through Mexico, even though there's so much delicious food in Mexico and they still want to be here. Explain it. Well, because well, because that's a, That's an easy. Well, have you ever seen Street Fighter or Tex-Mex? Or t- I, I concede you. I, I, can, I concede your point. I concede your point. I your point. <laughs> He's already know. Yeah, 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 never mind. Never mind. Yeah. Junior has a bit about this, bro. <laughs> what would Junior said it? He said they out here fighting again. I'll take that to go. <laughs> You're fighting, and all of a sudden the cartel comes in, does a hit, blows the house next door, and you just want your fucking, you know, carne asada tacos, bro. You're just like, all right, now I got to clean the dirt off the asada tacos. Oh, now I'm deaf on the right ear. I'm just going to enjoy my taco. Like, I'm mm-hmm. telling you, bro. I'm telling you. Like, that's exactly why. I mean, it's a Street I'm, Fighter analogy. Uh, bro, I still right. think it's a Tex-Mex. You see about the... <laughs> 
What the fuck do you mean by Tex-Mex? It's not Mexican. It's not Texan. Okay. Tex-Mex. It's just that's really whenever you eat a burrito. That's whenever you eat a burrito and you find corn in it. He's like, there's not supposed to be corn in a burrito. No, anyway. there should not be corn in a burrito. I, I highly agree with that. It's the it's queso. It's queso is the Tex Mex thing, right? So I live here in Texas. You don't know this. So it's, yeah, uh, I know, I know that. I thought you'd be on my side. It's queso, right? Like, like, like the, the idea queso, of this, yeah. this liquefied cheese on everything le uh, legit disgusts me. I, I don't understand. I don't understand. Like, I think people do that. Like, I'm okay with chimichurri. Chimichurri is good, but don't get I'm me okay wrong. Like, I like cheese. I like cheese, right? Like, I, 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 I dig a good grilled cheese sandwich. I like a good cheese pull, right? But like, yeah. if I'm eating a, if I'm eating a taco, all I need is the simplicity of a taco. I need the meat, the onions, the cilantro, and maybe a dipping sauce of some kind, some hot sauce. That's it. I don't need all this queso. I don't These need white all this. people. <laughs> You know, you know, you know what would go really good on this taco? Some sour cream and queso. Sour gosh. cream and queso. Oh God! And, it's, and, and instead of like carne, it's and instead of carne asada, can we put some of that brisket we were smoking for the last six that months? Brisket we were smoking. I've seen yeah, that in the last three days. I'm still gonna eat it. Like I'm still gonna eat it. Like, I'm I'm gonna eat it. Yeah. Oh, oh no, yeah, no, bro, I'm a fat ass. I'm eating me some brisket. I'm not saying I'm not eating. Okay, so just add <laughs> half of that what you're throwing, half of it, just. Instead of covering the whole taco in queso, like dip it and then just give it to me. Like, don't just fucking throw a slew of, of sauces and ah, my stomach just got messed up thinking about that. I you need to say a that. You say that and then, yeah. and then the Mexican goes, well, here goes a birria taco. And you go, well, yeah, but birria. Okay. Okay. Hold the fuck on. <laughs> it's the it's the he got me talking Spanish. A birria taco is very fucking different. First of all, secondly, I have seen people doing birria ramen or birria ramen now. I've seen that. It looks so good. I can't know it does not. Uh, no, that looks bro. like fucking a heart attack waiting. Yes, it does. Noodles? noodles? <laughs> no. Noodles, noodles. Yes. No. It looks, bro, no. Bro. Consume. I'll take some consume with it, but no. Bro, man. Yeah, ramen, ramen noodles should shouldn't be. Bro, mm, bro, listen yeah. to me. Listen, listen. It shouldn't be legal. No, it shouldn't. You say you say it shouldn't be legal. Yeah, fact, it's like the, it's like crack. Because you see people. Is, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is that it exists, and I've had it. It there's does. A place here, here, there's a place in DFW that does it here, and I've had it. And you say you shouldn't have it, and it looks like you shouldn't have it, and then you taste it, and then you're like, "God darn it!" They yeah, got too me. much. You it's say that, and then you have yeah. it. That's why I said it's just like crack. I'm like, you know you're not supposed to have it. You know you're not I've supposed never to have it. Done crack. <laughs> so birria tacos. If the birria is is cocaine, the birria ramen is the crack. And yes, it is that way. You should not have either. But once you have one, you have to try the other. And I'm telling no, you, sir. God, no. I'm telling you. The sauciest thing that I like is um uh curry, Japanese curry. I've never had that. Like you've never had that. Well, Danny, I guess I know what I'm cooking next time you come up here. Bro, like, just, yeah. Yeah, I think you made some. I had some of that. A few weeks ago. Yeah, yeah a few I just weeks want some ago. Tri -tip. I want some tri tip. <laughs> Everybody, it's going to have Japanese. It's going to have Japanese curry on it. Just no, so it's you know. not. I'm not going <laughs> to fucking. <laughs> Danny's like, give me some rice. Un poquito de arroz, un poquito de chimichurri sauce on the tri tip, and I'm happy. Okay. Maybe some beans if you want to feel frisky. You know what I mean? Yeah. Dude, that's, I like that's beans. green I like beans, beans. Green beans. Green beans, right. like French green beans. That's like my shit right there. I like that. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, dude, what you got coming up? Well, you know, we've been working on the podcast. It's growing. Uh, go ahead. Good. Can you Good. can you pull up the channel on your end, please? Uh, yeah. Guys, if you're listening to uh, if you're listening to this, uh, I, and you don't and you like conspiracy theories and you like a bunch of trash talk, like I do right now, and you're bilingual, and you're bilingual, um, or one. Listen to Cultura Truth Project, man. It is the, it has been honestly the most fun thing I've ever done in my career as a stand up and as a podcaster. Like, we sit here. I love how I, I'm halfway through this and I've already listened to these. 
I haven't bro, finished this one. <laughs> bro, it, it's it's the most fun thing in the world. Like I feel the most creative while doing this, but also it's just like I'm doing it with my brother. It doesn't even feel like work. It's it's an amazing it's an amazing project, man, and it's growing fast. Like we've been we've been around for five months, and look at look at the followers. It's two hundred and some two hundred and some in there, and it keeps, continues to grow. Um, the, the audio continues to grow as well. We're as of right now, we've been listened to in 60 countries and we're at over a thousand downloads on everything throughout all platforms. And it's just, it's an amazing thing. Like I will say this, Jose and I, uh, my brother, Jose, who is the CEO of Gonzalez media company. And, um, I'm don't know what the fuck they call me, but I'm a business partner of some kind. I'm getting some benefit out of it. Um, we have come up to the same vision of where we want to take the creative side of what we do mm -hmm. and it involves a lot more than just the podcast right like he has you know gonzalez media company has two shows right now it has uh 3t in espanol which is a cryptocurrency show and then we also have cultura truth project which is fun it's it's we talk pop culture we talk conspiracy theories and stuff mm -hmm. like that um but there's so much more that's coming down the line with that. And I'm excited to see where it's going uh, as as the entire, not only Gonzalez Media Group grows and gets, we have some pretty big eyes on it as far as investors and wanting to be part of it. And I'm excited for that. Um, the comedy thing is still something I'm working on. There's a lot of things that are up in the air right now. I mm -hmm. don't want to give too much of that away. I'll tell you boys after. Um, after I get off, after we get off here, what's happening with that? But there's there's some pretty awesome things coming down the line with that. Uh, Cultura Truth Project. We are in the process of releasing our first piece of. I don't know if they call it merch or it's like merch. We're gonna call it a pamphlet, right? So it's gonna be this. We're partnering up with uh with with, with an artist called Paranoid American. He does this really cool stuff. Uh, he makes comic books, all crowdfunded. So we're talking to him on how to do it and how to how to get things going. So be on the lookout for that. I don't have a timeline, but I do know that there's some pretty cool stuff coming out uh, okay. with that. And yeah, man, like. Honestly, Jose being based out of Orlando, me being based out of here, we've between him and I, we've been able to kind of literally do the one and twin powers activate and just be able to bring some really heavy hitters to the podcast early, um, including Richard, you know, Richard, which was probably one of my favorite episodes. We talked some of the craziest crap, you know, and the which we need to have him back on to talk about this child traffic and stuff, but it's, it's insane. Like all the things that we've seen and, and all the things that we're doing. Um, I mean, I'm really happy to see where it's going. And Jose, like I say this, Jose and I, we sat down, we have the same vision of where we want to go. Um, we don't always agree on how it should be done, but we always have enough respect for each other to make it happen. And bro, the formula is working and I love it. I love working well, with good. my brother. Good. I love working with my brother, man. It doesn't feel like work. It's literally like we hang out, we have fun, we we each do our part, and that's it. There's none of this, you know, in the creative space, and y'all know this, right? Y'all been doing this a minute in the creative space, like it's the battle of the egos, right? Like mm -hmm. there's no there's no battle of the egos here. There's just more like, hey, you got this, I got this. Uh, let's talk next week, reconvene, figure out what's next. Like, yeah, that's the thing that people don't get. Like that, I'm yeah. glad you brought that up because a lot of people don't understand like all the pre-planning and like how you don't make money for a while. I actually saw a thing with Rogan where he was interviewing oh, somebody yeah. and yeah. I sent it to you. Someone was like, how long before it paid? He goes, five years. He's like, I was just doing it and like selling tickets to shows. And next thing you know, fucking he's like, oh, there is something here. Like people don't get the, all the yeah, pre-planning. I think he was actually shit. talking to Jordan Peterson. I, I don't remember. I don't remember. It doesn't it matter. He's talked about it before, but that's the thing. It's like, yeah. Like it's a lot of he, fucking work. Not just the work. It's I think we're in a blessed position now as creatives, right? As stand-ups, as podcasters, that mm -hmm. Joe Rogan's done it. We see the template, right? Uh, don't call me a podcaster. I'm not just a podcaster, Danny. You're right. You're also an interpreter. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You're a voice talent, sir. You're a voice talent. 
uh no it's it's we the we have been we have been blessed to see the template and we yeah. see it go through and we can adjust it towards our needs and you know what we can't fight some of the things as far as the ai and all this you know machine learning that we're fight against when doing online stuff but mm-hmm. The people, people are hungry for this type of content, man. Like especially like right now with the with the bilingual Latino stuff, and we're we're tapping into a market right now that people just want to see. They want to see. Well, do you, do they want to see about real shit. Yeah, what you got? Well, did did you do you, do you see that? Because it's not. Because um, I say most people watch the podcasts because, you know. You don't trust CNN and you don't trust Fox, so so you go on podcast. That's a byproduct of it, though. That's I because think I think most people would believe Joe Rogan or somebody else on a well, podcast. Most people will believe most people will believe people who have proven to be right and be neutral when it comes to certain subjects. I'm not saying Rogan is because I don't. I haven't seen too many of his episodes for me to sit here and make a conclusion. Well, he's got like over two thousand. I have so not a lot seen of times what I see is shorts, and then I'll follow through like yeah. i'm watching the the, I just the latest one a, he did with a with a what was it danny i know you saw this I don't uh know, Terrence, no, there's what uh, terrence howard yeah that's one i yeah. haven't seen yet, that's one i'm howard. trying to watch so i'm, I'm like 15 that's minutes in. yeah i have not seen it i, I have seen that. i've seen a couple of the shorts but i have not seen it and it's interesting because he's he's gone viral for some of his theories and stuff that he's working on oh, which yeah. honestly I, I don't know. I mean, that's something that Jose and I, we, we covered on, on the podcast and it's, it's an interesting thing because he's bringing out a lot of science that is theoretical, hasn't been proven. And the dude has the patents and the, and everything to go with it. So it's like the dude is putting his money where his mouth is. And I'm excited to see somebody in the creative field, use his creative mind to do science. Cause science is a creative field, whether you like it or not. Right, it's just. Well, I it, like that. I like that. Things. Things. Yeah, it, it's science, but he also had a certain logic to it. When you seen, I don't know if you've seen some of the diagrams and stuff that he yeah, had. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah. You haven't seen. It. No, no, don't, don't. I know you saw it. Don't. I'm no. 15 minutes in. He hasn't seen it. Like, don't. Okay. Yeah. No, no, yeah. no. There's a lecture. I know you watched it. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm talking yeah. about the lecture, not not the. Oh, program. the lecture. Oh, yeah. yeah. He does do a they lecture thought, too. He did, he yeah. Did, yeah, I know what lecture you're talking about. The, yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. I saw the lecture. The lecture is interesting. But I haven't oh, seen yeah. his his entire podcast with Rogan, and that's something I really want to get into and dive into. It's just one of those things where it's like, yo, time, bro, like time in the day. Oh yeah, yeah, you know. Um, but it's interesting. It's interesting because to see somebody that, like I said, is coming from the creative field and applying it to science, and also like, hey, this is what I believe. This is my my idea of why and. Standing on business, like I say all the time on the podcast, like we stand on business, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. you know, it's yeah. interesting. It's interesting, honestly. I'm excited to see what happens with that. Um Rogan, whether you like him or not, man, this dude has transformed the way we consume yeah. information. Him, Adam Curry, uh, the other guy, what's his name from the man show? Forget his name. Just Red oh, no, no, Red I, Band. I, uh Adam Carolla. Adam Carolla. All these three guys, man. They, they've all yeah. they've all transformed yeah. the way we, we consume information. And yeah, I think that's a podcast is just where people go for uh somebody they, they trust. It may not be right, but at least they trust them. Yeah, but it's it's people are starting to the people who watch podcasts a lot of times, and it depends, right? You also have people that they they see things and they start mm. researching things. Yeah. Because people also don't understand how to like research information. And that's been like a really big topic that people have talked about. It's like learning a language. Like oh yeah. You know, people people think that just because you speak a language that just because you, you did Duolingo for two weeks does not mean you're fluent. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. doesn't mean that you're a fucking interpreter, you know? And that's the thing. Like there's a false sense of security. But there's a lot of people that also understand how to like research things. Oh yeah, yeah. no, dude. Oh, oh, remember like what is unrelated, but I wanted to bring this up to you. So remember mm-hmm. how you told me it was like, hey D, uh, I know you're training to be an interpreter because that's kind of what we're doing too, right? Mm-hmm. And um, and you're like, hey, let me know when you start getting headaches when you're doing, you know, you're interpreting, you know, sight interpreting, right? Like doing mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay, six hours. Just so you know, six hours is is my limit. 
And you know how I found out? At work. Okay. <laughs> at work. <laughs> because I, <laughs> at work, I, I do a lot of insurance calls and I do them a lot in Spanish. And a lot of the stuff that I'm like, do, there's not a lot of the material that I have is in English. And I'm sitting here talking to these patients and I'm like on the fly going, and then one day, like at three o'clock, I'm like, bro, I got this massive headache. <laughs> So you're not the thing is the other thing is you're not you're not doing it constantly. There's like a pause and there's this. Imagine if you had to like do that nonstop all day. Like that's what I'm saying. Forty five minutes, but six hours of like yeah on the phone talking, translating medications, and oh dude, oh yeah, it's that's that's cute. Hey, I like how you, like you say it's cute, and I want you to do a full. I want you to do a full med- adherence call in Spanish. I'm sure you could, you can interpret it, but I'm sure you can't actually do it and do the clinical side on the fly. Well, no, because that's why I'm the fucking interpreter, Danny. <laughs> that's the whole point of being a fucking interpreter is I don't have to do none of that shit. You don't even look at me. I'm I'm like a fly on the wall, motherfucker. I just sit there and I just go. Bzz, bzz. That's it. I don't have to put dates. I don't have to do none of that shit. No, no, you, you're Fuck the guy in y'all. the ear. You're the guy in the ear when when you know when they're doing yep. positions. He goes, you, you're like, but es que tú sabes que la cosa no va así. Well, you know the things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 that's yeah, how. Bro. That's, that's bro. how Al Biden gets through. In una tanga rosita, she has a pink song. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my boss is gonna watch this and be like, hey, "Man, he really went at it. He really got got a little heated there." I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be in a, in a meeting. And he's gonna be like, "So, Richard, how's how's the podcast doing?" <laughs> so, how do you how do you really feel? how do you really feel when people <laughs> ask you to do things outside of your scope of your work? Like, well, boss, let me tell you. No, I had a situation like that where uh, about the machine and uh, an, uh the what the machine. Oh, I can talk about this now. So the reason I got heated was because I had someone um, a couple months ago made a comment about, oh, normally we use uh, <laughs> normally well, start we use from the other. Yeah, start from the I went, I went to a hospital to go interpret. And yeah. when I got there, the woman goes, OK, do you have your machine? And I go, what machine? She goes, your little translating machine. And I had to look at her like she was retarded because I was like. Hey, what hey, the hey, fuck hey, are you, hey, what are you hey, talking hey, about? Hey, you sir, talking sir, about? sir, 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 sir. We don't use the word retarded anymore. We use differently abled, okay? <laughs> Anyways, and I thought she was joking because I'm like, at first I was like, okay, you're dumb. Bless your heart. And then she like looked at me like, where is it? And I'm like, oh, you're serious. Like, bless your heart, sweetheart. And I go, I don't need a machine. She goes, what if you run into a word that you don't know? And I pull up my dictionary. I go, that's why I got a dictionary. And on my phone, I got the Royal Academy. I pull it up, but very rare that I have to use that. And she's like, oh, well, we had someone else that they would come in with a machine and they would talk to the machine and the person will talk. And that's how they did it. She's like, do you not need a machine? And I'm like, I am the machine. (laughs) What are you talking about? I am the fucking machine that you need. Like Listen, what, here, what there the is no AI that can <laughs> process things as fast as I can. Okay, my mind processes things in fastest way that you. Can. No, 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 no. It's not. It's not even that. It's just like that's not an interpreter. That's not what we do. Because if someone showed up to to me and was like, "I just use this this thing," I go, "Cool. Let's go ahead and put it on some exotic language that's gonna make you look stupid and you're gonna get sued." Like well, that's the, why the, I say, like, the good biggest, luck. The biggest thing, because you've always said that it's always context. Yeah, and the, the way the way you understand s- context, and it's the way you say the word. Yeah, another thing is, where's the person from? You, you're gonna and say where you're, the person you're gonna from. say yeah, you're gonna say pinche, and someone's gonna think ah pinche like food, and yeah. someone's gonna say ah fuck, Where's and then you're gonna confuse the machine. Pincho y pinche is something pincho. else. Well, that's, that's true. It is pincho. It is true. It is pincho. El pinche. Where the fuck, Danny? El pincho, 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 pincho se come, and pinche is also like fuck. Okay. So yeah. Which so so you here? have. So so here's the thing. My whole point is, you have like this person that's going out with a fucking machine saying these things, and I find out about it. And I was like, who the fuck is that bold? That would fucking do that and think that you're gonna make money like that? Like that's a bold thing to do. 
I bet you it was a New Yorkian that doesn't speak Spanish saying, I, I can speak oh. Spanish. I'll use this thing to, uh, oh, God. to, to translate uh, because I like that word. God. Don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. I guarantee you. No, I love him. <sighs> no, I, I think it's a I think it's Canadian. I think he's Canadian. Do you think he's Canadian? <laughs> BBL uh, Drizzy. BBL Drizzy. Speaking of Canadian, you know Speak, who we had on the podcast? I'm just wondering, how do you translate? Eh. 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 Like when they say, okay, okay. Like, yeah. like, <laughs> I'm, saying, I'm not even joking. I'm like, just saying, Canada. They say a lot. A, yeah, I would yeah. say a. Okay. Yeah, that's that's how that would get translated because colloquially, like, what what does a mean? It could be a lot of things. Did I tell you that we had a, a Brad Goss here on the podcast recently? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know who that is, right? No idea. He's a he's a hold on. He's a comic from Canada that. He had some recent like death threats too. That was one of the things we were talking with him about. Yeah. It's this guy right here. He writes these books that are like, all right, so I'll show the books, right? It's like, yeah, he won't care. He, won't he care. yeah, he's he's gonna love this. Yeah, it's like go he's ahead, show my books. Yeah, uh, Uncle Jeff's oh Island. That's why he got death threats, of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Click clop the racist horse cop. He's got a gun. So <laughs> no, 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 cucumber no, no, no. curds can't come to dinner. <laughs> Bro, have you all seen that show on Netflix talking about comics? Have you all seen that show on Netflix, Baby Reindeer? No, I haven't. I Baby saw Reindeer? that Pierce Morgan no, had the lady. What is what is it about? Talk to me about that. So it's this British comic who apparently Y como dicen en Puerto Rico, aparente legalmente, had, Apparently had, a, had a stalker. Homie went through the entire thing. Lady ended up going to jail, right? According to the show, at least. And he wrote a show about it. And he changed names for, like, privacy issues, right? And then homegirl, homegirl, like, four months after the show is out on Netflix, finds out. And she goes, I'm Pierce Morgan. Bro, doesn't that prove the guy right though? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. Wait, oh, stop! Hold on. Pierce oh, Morgan's fuck. a talk show host. Hold on, I know who the fuck Pierce Morgan is, asshole. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> the show. <laughs> hold on, hold on. God damn it! This is what happens when I fucking just. The hammer is Let me see if I understand. So, <laughs> the the stalker that the guy's talking about went on Pierce Morgan. And what did Pierce ask? If the allegations were true. And what'd she say? She's like, I don't want to say he was true, but I do, I do know that he he stalked me, blah, 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 blah. Like, 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 di like deflecting, making herself yeah. look even guiltier, bro. Yeah. No, yeah. Like, 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 it's bad, bro. You have to watch the show and then watch the clips and you're like, la cabrón, esta estupida. Like, 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 like she's stupid, dog. Like, like, I'm like, I'm so like, did okay. she do it though? Like, do you think she did it? Oh, I don't know if she did it, but I'll tell you this if you I, if you put a gun to my head, bro, like, homegirl, <laughs> homegirl wanted, she did, some it. Dick. She did it, she did homegirl it. wanted some dick and he didn't want to give it to her. I've he never just... had a stalker, thank god. I've yes, never you. had a stalker. No, yes, yes, who, who, wait, type, hold on. Put hit pause. Who's the stalker? Who's the stalker? Who's you tell me who the fucking stalker is right now in the fucking private chat, asshole? Ah, I can't remember now. You'll tell me offline. You'll tell me offline, asshole. You'll tell me offline. It's, it's this motherfucker. I got now. I have to watch that Pierce Morgan interview. I know what I'm fucking. Yeah, doing I haven't had a stalker. <laughs> That's funny. I got. I know who it was. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, uh, this is Russia. Anyways, <laughs> it is Russia. I love it's that. Like beach. This is Russia, yeah, bro. Uh, anyway, I feel. Like, I feel like we're gonna get a cease and desist from Burt Kreischer for me saying I'm the machine. Like, <laughs> I, I can see oh, a fucking. I, I, I'm not the machine, but I saw la máquina. Okay, la meto la máquina. La máquina de compartir culo. Yeah, you go on stage and put your shirt on. 
Yeah, I definitely. <laughs> 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 oh, what's that song from back in the day? Si tú le metes la máquina, yo le meto la máquina. Oh my God. Yo meto a bailar. <laughs> You're right. I'm not the machine. Yo soy la máquina. La máquina. <laughs> yo soy la máquina. TM. Trademark. Oh, God. Danny, you've been awesome, brother. Can you give I everybody know, the deets of where they can find you? I love you too, man. It's always man. nice to see you. Bro. Yeah, um, I'm here. I'm here see, too. If you've seen this show, you probably already know me, man. Shout out to my people in Barbados. Yes. Shout out to my people it's in Barbados. It's been a minute since we had some Barbados issues. Let's yeah, Barbados. it, has, it been, has been a minute, actually, now that you mentioned that. I think I think New York is our number one, where our number one most downloads are. No. To be honest yeah, with you. Well, you can you can it find went, me on all socials, guys. Uh, but oh. the f- easiest one, if you want to get a hold of me for anything involving comedy, podcast, or whatever, at Poppy underscore the comic on Instagram. Uh, follow Cultura Truth Project on YouTube. Uh, follow my brother Jose G. Three uh, T Academy and um, Cultura Truth Project. But man, more than anything, I just love hanging out and doing this. This is my favorite part of my day most of the time. It's just talking oh, crap yeah. with my friends and my brother so anything man definitely, definitely. comedy <laughs> comedy's coming there's stuff in the works just uh stay patient um good things come with time and other great things happen all at once so things are happening guys well good good well we'll wrap this up guys uh to everybody listening thank you so much for listening Go ahead and hit that like and subscribe buttons. If you have anybody that you'd like for us to talk to, we're actually looking for people that we want to have on the show, specifically some historians and whatnot. And to everybody else that's been following us from day one, like, thank you so much. We're hitting our third year here pretty soon. Uh, Our anniversary is coming up soon for our third year. So, yeah. And just remember that uh, Richard's belly button needs your prayers. So, (laughs) it stinks. (laughs) 